How we many participants do we have right now? 16, 18, 18, 19. They're coming in steadily. 22, 25. Fifty-three. Let me mute my other computer. That's my first one. There's no sound on this one. I'll put the sign-in sheet in. I promoted Amber. You want to wait till about 6.10, allow people to, uh, yeah, those who are late to come in and join the meeting. We'll start at 6.10. It sounds good. I see someone's raising their hand. Yes. You want me to allow to talk? You want me to allow to talk and or we're gonna tell them that we're gonna hold questions until the end. Yes. We'll be starting shortly. And then we'll, we'll hold the questions until after the presentation. Mm -hmm. Yes. We have 57 now, just a few more. And you can go ahead and start. Sure. Yeah. Okay. We have um, 50 something people here already. Okay. All right. We're going to start. Can you everyone hear me? Yeah. Okay. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for taking your time to attend tonight's county presentation on the improvements of Somerset Avenue. My name is Bon Ng, and I'm the engineer for this project. Tonight, I will be presenting to you three conceptual alternatives in improving Somerset Avenue from Stanton Avenue to Redwood Road. Following tonight's presentation, we will be asking you to provide feedback on the alternatives that were presented to you this evening. Your feedback is very important. It will assist us in selecting appropriate alternative for design and construction. At the end of the presentation, I'll give you information on how you can submit your feedback or ask more questions or obtain more project information after tonight's meeting. Before we start the presentation, I would like to ask everyone to please hold off on all your questions till the very end. We will have a question and comment session after the presentation. Thank you in advance for your cooperation. Tonight's agenda. Tonight's presentation will comprise of a project overview. I will go over some of the existing conditions on Somerset Avenue, as well as the project goals and the proposed improvements. Project alternatives. In this part of the presentation, I will be presenting three alternative layouts illustrating the various proposed improvements. The comparison alternatives, in that session, I'll be briefly highlighting the main differences between the three alternatives. Potential project impacts, 
in this part of the presentation, I will go over some of the potential project impacts resulting from the alternatives. In addition, the county conducted a parking study to obtain parking usage information on Somerset Avenue. Two of the three alternatives that will be presented includes the removal of on-street parking. In this part of the presentation, we will look at existing conditions as well as forecasted parking conditions when street parking is removed. Next, I will discuss the next steps and project schedule after tonight's presentations. And lastly, we will open the meeting for community input and comments. One last note before we begin, if you know someone who is unable to attend tonight's meeting or if you wish to view tonight's presentation again, we will post this presentation on the county's project website. As shown on this location map slide, this project is located on Somerset Avenue. The limits for this project is from Stanton Avenue to Redwood Road. Along this stretch of Somerset, there are several points of interest. This includes Stanton Elementary School, the Foothill Baptist Church, Al's Food Market, and Our Lady of Grace Church and School. Somerset Avenue provides direct, direct access, access to these points of interest. Existing conditions. Somerset Avenue is currently assigned 25 mile per hour two lane roadway with on street parking. The existing roadway right away varies from 50 to 60 feet in width. Presently, Somerset has some existing concrete sidewalks varying four feet to eight feet in width at various locations. These concrete sidewalks are interspersed with asphalt concrete and gravel pathways. There is currently no bicycle facilities along the stretch of Somerset. AC Transit has bus line number 28 that runs on Lake Chabot Road that traverses westbound on Somerset and onto Staten Avenue. In addition, AC Transit also has a flex line that is suspended temporarily that runs on Somerset Avenue in proximity of Santa Maria Avenue. Here are some pictures of Somerset depicting existing conditions I previously, previously described. As you can see from this picture, this segment of Somerset Avenue lacks concrete sidewalks. Here are some other pictures of Somerset with no sidewalks. In this picture, we have an existing utility pole in the middle of the sidewalk that is currently obstructing passageway of pedestrians and more importantly, impeding wheelchair access. Here's another location of a similar situation of a utility pole. Our goal for this project is to provide a multimodal facility that improves walkability and accessibility to local schools, businesses, businesses and residences, improves bicycle safety, improves traffic safety, improves drainage, treat roadway stormwater runoff, rehabilitate and repair the pavement and improve corridor aesthetics. To achieve the project goals previously mentioned, we propose to construct a continuous standard concrete curb, gutter, and sidewalk entirely along Somerset Avenue, ADA curb ramps at all pedestrian crossings, and bikeway facilities. I will discuss more about the different bikeway facilities that are being proposed for this project later on in this presentation. Some other types of uh, proposed improvements as part of this project is intersection bulb outs, high visibility crosswalks, stormwater treatment measures such as bowel retention areas, storm drain improvements, rectangular, rectangular rapid flashing beacons, signs and crossings, mill and overlay slurry seal the roadway pavement, and planting of street trees of various variety. It should be noted that not all of the above improvements apply to each alternative. Here's are some sample pictures of the uh, rapid flashing beacon with high visibility, uh, high visibility crosswalks.
bicycle facilities. As I mentioned earlier, we are planning to include bikeway facility as part of this project to improve bicycle safety along Somerset Avenue. There are three different types of bicycle facilities being proposed under different alternatives. The first one is called a class two bike lane. A portion of the road a portion of the roadway is specifically designated for bicycle travel. It is signed and striped for the exclusive use, use by bicyclists. The second type of bikes facility that is being considered is called a buffered bike lane. Basically it is a class two bike lane as described previously, but with additional space, a buffered stripe zone is added adjacent to a bike lane to provide further separation between the motor vehicles and bicyclists. And the last type of bicycle facility that we are proposing is a class three bike route. Through the installation of bicycle pavement markings and signage, there are plate and then signage uh, and sharrows called sharrows that are placed in the center of the travel lane. Bicycles and vehicles share the travel lane. All three types of these bicycle facilities are presented in the following three alternatives. The county developed the following three alternatives incorporating improvements previously mentioned. It should be noted that the alternatives were developed keeping in mind of constructing the improvements within the county's 50 foot right of way. Alternative one, parking and class three bike route. This is designed that retains parking on both sides of the roadway and provides for a class three bike facility. The class three bike facility, as, a, as, as I mentioned earlier, is a shared travel bike route with shadow pavement markings in the travel lane. Alternatives two and two A, it's parking on one side only and a class two bike lane is designed to eliminate parking on one side while retaining parking on the upside and provides for a class two bike facility on both sides. Again, if I didn't mention clearly, alternative is eliminating parking on one side while we retaining parking on the opposite side and providing class two bike lanes on both sides. Alternative three is no parking on both sides and with a buffer class bike lane. It is designed that eliminates parking on both sides of the roadway to provide for a buffer class two bike lane facility. Here's the typical section for alternative one. This particular alternative features six foot wide sidewalks on both sides, on street parking on both sides and bulb, bulb outs. It also features a shared bike route, that is a share of pavement marking indicating that bicyclists and more motor vehicles share the travel way. However, this alternative does not provide for a class two bike lane or a bike lane buffer, nor does it provide for street trees. Here is an illustration of what alternative one looks like. As you can see, parking is is provided on both sides of the road and the bicyclists and the motor vehicles share the same travel lane. Here's a conceptual laid out what alternative one in the vicinity of San Miguel looks like. In this snapshot, you see the intersection bulb outs, the shared bike and travel lanes and six foot wide sidewalks. This is just a stash up from the overall layout for this alternative. Here is the entire layout for alternative one. This layout as well as the layouts for alternatives two and three will be made available for everyone to view on our project website. When viewing this entire layout on our website, you should be able to zoom in on a specific, specific location or your address in this exhibit. Here is a typical section for alternative two. This alternative features five foot wide sidewalks on both sides, on street parking on the south side only, bulb outs, um, class two bike lanes, but it does not provide for a class two bike lane buffer. There's an error there. And does not provide for street trees. Alternative two, B is just a mirror image of 2A with parking removed on the south side. Again, this particular alternative provides for five foot wide sidewalks on street parking on the north side only, bulb outs, and a class two bike lane on both sides. Okay. 
here are some illustrations of Alternative two where parking removed on one side with class two bike lanes on both sides of the roadway. Here's another illustration of alternative two. And here's a conceptual layout for alternative in the vicinity of San Miguel Ave. Here in this layout, you see parking on the south side only, no park on the north side, bow balls on the parking side, class two bike lanes and five foot wide sidewalks. Again, this entire layout for this alternative will be on our website for all of you. Again, this is just a snippet of the entire layout. Here's a typical section for alternative three. In this alternative, we have seven foot wide sidewalks on both sides. Parking is removed on both sides and there are no bulb outs. However, uh, we are incorporating bike lane, uh, buffered bike lanes on both sides and street trees. And here's an illustration for, uh, for alternative three. And here's a snippet for alternative three conceptual layout in the vicinity of San Miguel. Here in this alternative three layout, parking is removed from both sides. We have a buffered class two bike lanes on both sides and seven foot wide sidewalks. This, this entire layout will also be again in our, our project website. Comparison of alternatives. In comparing to all three alternatives, starting with sidewalks, alternative one has six foot wide sidewalks, alternative two have five foot wide, five, five foot wide sidewalks, and alternative three has seven foot wide sidewalks. With on-street parking, alternative one retains parking on both sides, alternative two parking is eliminated on one side while the other side is retained. Again, alternative two would only provide for parking on one side of the road. And for alternative three, both, park, both sides of parking would be removed. Class two bike lanes, only alternatives two and three are provided. But for buffer uh, class two bike lanes, only alternative three has buffer class two bike lanes. For the bike routes, Cheryl's share travel lane, it's alternative one. Bull bolts, bull bolts are provided in alternative one and two, but not in alternative three. Planting of street trees would only be provided in alternative uh, three, which is seven foot wide sidewalk. It should be noted that out of the three alternatives, alternative two provides both parking and bike lanes. Again, uh, I'd like to mention that parking is allowed only on one side only. Potential project impacts. Here are some some potential project impacts stemming from the alternatives. As a result of removing on-street parking, uh, referring to alternatives two and three, the resulting overflow of parking may impact side streets. I'll be taking a little bit, I'll be talking a little bit more on the subject and the parking study the county has conducted on the next slide. But continue on, we will also have utility pole relocations, Private improvements that are currently encroaching into the county right away and conflicting with the proposed improvements will be required to be removed, relocated, or restored, depending on the type of, uh, of private encroachment 
such as fences, landscaping, driveway, walkways. Also, tree removals of various sizes. Existing trees are in conflict, but the new side will also need to be removed. As part of this project, the county conducted a parking study to ascertain the parking usage on Somerset Avenue. The percentages shown on this slide represents the peak amount of parking spaces being used on an average day for that segment of Somerset Avenue. From this slide, we see that on the north side of Somerset Avenue, from Stanton Avenue to Lake Chabot Road, we have a peak parking space usage of 47%. In other words, at its peak, 47% of the available parking spaces are being used. Continuing on the north side and moving along towards Red River Road, we have 55% peak usage, 42%, and 34% peak parking usage. On the south side, starting with the segment from Stanton Avenue to Lake Chabot Road, we observed 71% peak usage. And moving towards River Road, we observed 70%, 42%, and 39% peak usage for the other three remaining segments. The next couple of slides provide a picture of the forecasted parking utilization for alternatives 2A and 2B, in which parking is removed on one side. As a reminder, alternative 2A is, a lay is the layout that removes parking on the north side while preserving parking on the south side and includes class two bike lanes on both sides of the roadway. For our analysis with the standard scenario of no parking on the north side, we projected the previous unrestricted north side parking onto the south side parking spaces. In other words, it assumed that all previous parking on the north would now park on the south side. As a result, our projections show that on the south side of Somerset Avenue, from Staten Avenue to Lake, Ch Lake Chabot Road, would experience 124% parking utilization. In other words, it appears that there will be not enough spaces to accommodate both north side and south side parking demand along the south side segment. The overflow parking may spill over to the south side streets. As we move towards the direction of Red River Road, we see 126%, 58%, and 68% forecasted parking usage for the remaining south side segments. This slide provides for forecasted parking utilization for Alternative 2B. Again, Alternative 2B is the layout that removes parking on the south side while preserving parking on the north side and includes class two bike lanes on both sides of the roadway. Our analysis with this scenario of no parking on the south side, we project the previous unrestricted south side parking, parking onto the north side parking spaces. As a result, our projections show that on the north side of Somerset Avenue from Stanton Avenue to Lake Chabot Road would experience 111% parking utilization. There will be, it appears that it may not be enough space for spaces to accommodate both north side and south side parking demand along this segment. As we move towards the direction of Redwood Road, we see 100%, 116%, and 72% forecasted parking usage for the remaining north side segments. At this time, I'd like to mention one important note I'd like to add is a variation to the alternatives is called commute hour bike lanes. What are commute hour bike lanes? During commute hours, for example, from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., on-street parking is prohibited and this temporary prohibited parking space is used for bicyclists as a bike lane. These restricted parking hours can be extended all day and on-street on parking is resumed at night, for example, at 5 p.m. This variation, this variation will allow alternative one to have both parking and bike lanes. After today's presentation, we will review and evaluate the community feedback and comments and select a conceptual alternative for design. We're also planning to conduct presentations to this project to the Castro Valley Municipal Advisory Committee and to the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Commission. Here's a project timeline. Shown here are four phases to the project, the planning phase, design phase, utility relocations, and the construction phase. We are nearing the end of the planning phase. Our next step is to review and evaluate your feedback and comments and select an appropriate alternative. Once an alternative is selected, we will perform design, coordinate with the utility companies on relocating and adjusting their facility, facilities 
to accommodate our proposed improvements and thereafter start construction. At this time, I'd like to turn this over to Halima Anderson, our Public Works Information Specialist. She will be providing you information on how to provide feedback on tonight's presentation and the three alternatives that were presented. Halima? Halima? Good, afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, um, so uh, we have a poll that will be made available to you tonight. And it will also be located on our website uh, for you to review the alternatives that were presented and determine or note your uh, preferred alternative. So this is the link and I will provide it in the Q&A box where you can click on that link and again, as I said, it will be uh, located on our website as well for you to fill out. Uh, our website, we have a project website dedicated at uh, Somerset Avenue project. If you have additional comments, you can uh, submit them to info at acpwa.org. And this is our full website address. And I wanted to note also that we have a sign-in sheet for the meeting. If you look into the Q&A box, at the very top of the Q&A, there's a link where you can click and sign in uh, with all of your contact information so that we can follow up with you and make sure that you had the opportunity to complete the poll or any other uh, information relevant to the, to the project. So now we're going to. Uh, um, yeah. I, I don't think they're able to see the QA or click on the chat. Um, are you able to see the? Okay, let's see. They, they cannot see it. So um, I have people that are putting questions in the QA. Yeah, I think they can only see their own. So, um, uh, Bon, I'm going to unshare your screen, key. Okay. So I created um, short links for, okay, you have to unshare for me to share. How do I? Um, go to the top of the screen that you're sharing uh -huh. and then there's a stop share button. Got it. Okay, got it. Okay, thank you. So I'm um, sorry, you guys, um, maybe you have to type this in. It's a short link, just um, bit.ly and then the psalm dash sign would be the sign in sheet and then the poll would be um, the bottom one here. You guys can type it into your back browser. Halima, can you see if um, there's any that, that gets entered and stuff? That means it's working. Sure, yes. We want to go ahead and um, open it up to the, the questions that are, are coming up. OK, yeah, somebody posted it, but I don't know if others can see. Yes. Yes, I'm getting um, I'm getting responses to the sign in sheet. We have about eight people that have responded and they're steadily coming in. Okay.
we so Lima? To, yes, we wanted to also let you know that um, meeting information and other information related to this project will be shared on social media, Facebook, Twitter, as well as Nextdoor. Um, hopefully some of you have seen it on Nextdoor where we shared the meeting announcement here for this meeting. Okay, so we, can we open it up? You ready to open it up to the q and I'll let you know who is. Yeah, well, thank you, Alima. That basically concludes our tonight's presentation on three conceptual alternatives to improve Somerset Avenue. Again, I'd like to add that we have not selected alternative for design and construction. Your feedback and comments are important. Please don't forget to provide your feedback through our project website and to also inform your neighbors and friends that, that were not able to uh, attend tonight's presentation that this presentation and the feedback form will be posted on the project's website. At this time, I'd like to open up this meeting